have mothers? Hmm? Where'd that question come from? Well, after hearing that Velvet, Kamawana, and Eleanor all lost their parents, I just got curious. My mother was a strict, frightening woman, but she died a long time ago. I see. I have no parents either. But the wicked witch who took me in said I was born from a peach that floated down the river. Coming from you, I'd almost believe that. A and you, Aizen? We Malakim are formed from untainted mana. Sometimes humans are reborn as Malakim, but they retain no memory of their previous lives. In other words, we don't have blood relations like humans do. I see. By the time I was aware of anything around me, I was already tethered in being called number two. I suppose having no mother means I don't have any memories before that. I told Medissa that losing a mother is painful, but I can't know how painful it is. Go easy on him, Aizen. He's just a kid. I'm just telling it like it is. But listen to me, Lafi said. You can share deep connections with other people, even if you don't have a biological family. Malakim, too, can form precious bonds, true friendships, even family. That's right. Your words wouldn't have stopped Medissa if they weren't true in your heart. You really think so? I'm sure of it. It's far better than being a witch born from a peach. Nonsense! There's no nobler way to be born! I have an everlasting friendship with a dog, a monkey, a pheasant, and Bienfu. I hope he's right. Malakim can have familial ties, but what makes you and your sister siblings if you're not related by blood? Well, a very long time ago, I was born into this world from an earth pulse point up on a sacred mountain. I remained in that place for a long while, and then one day, she was born from the very same earth pulse point. Before we knew it, we had wound up living together under the same roof. Are two Malakim always siblings if they come from the same Earth Pulse point? No. The other Malakim were born there, but I never felt like they were my family. But something, I don't know what, was different with her. If she was sad, I'd feel sad. And if I was happy, she'd be happy too. She can be abrasive, but when she smiles, it's like nothing else. I swore to myself that whatever happened, I would protect her. I made a pendant from a stone on that sacred mountain and gave it to her as a lucky charm. Of course, she just wears it as a necklace. And your pendant? Did she give that to you? She had the same idea I had. She made the pendant herself and gave it to me as a good luck charm. Without either of us having mentioned a word of it beforehand, we each gave each other pendants in the same shape on the very same day. That's when I really knew that what I had felt all along was true. We were brother and sister. Is that her in the picture? Yeah. It's a self-portrait she drew for me on the day I left home. Did you draw her a picture of yourself? No. I don't exactly have an artistic side. Well, I'm sure that if you looked inside her pendant, you'd find a portrait of the person who matters most to her. I hope so. Yeah, and it would be nice if it was you. you two are. Hi, teacher. Have you made progress deciphering the book? 
I have indeed. It turns out there was a second counting song. I've already transcribed it. Would you read it aloud for us, child? Okay. Um... When the eight malevolences overflow, in the culmination of mankind's despair, Enominat will bring an end to all peoples and restore them to time immemorial. Four Empyreans shall wield a wrathful sword and cleave the great devourer, two asunder to sleep beneath the earth as scarlet moonlight illuminates the evil. The nameless Empyrean hath one heart, the nameless Empyrean hath one body. Oh, yet more delightful material to keep us awake at night. If I'm understanding this right, it's discussing the specific nature of Enominat? That's what I believe, yes. When the eight malevolences overflow in the culmination of mankind's despair, Enominat will bring an end to all peoples. So, when the world is at peak malevolence, Enominat will use that power to bring an end to all. Is that it? He's going to wipe out all of humanity? Is that what the Abbey is after? Is that why they've been trying to bring back Enominat? No. Artorius is not that kind of man. His two primary ideals are the many over one, and the restoration of order through will and reason. He sacrificed Lofi to protect this world, not to eradicate it. You mean that's who he is as far as you know, yeah? People change, Velvet. Perhaps the Shepherd gave up hope. Maybe he lost faith in mankind. Fools prone to sin, endlessly generating malevolence. He's not like that. If that's all true, then what point was there in Lofi's death? Is there anything else in that book? Yes and no. This copy itself is incomplete. There ought to be further pages, but they're missing. For now, I've done all I can. <sighs> there must be an original somewhere, right? Without it, I doubt the Abbey would be plotting Enominat's revival. We can be sure they have complete understanding of their Empyrean's nature. But this was the only copy in the Royal Villa. <sighs> it's getting pretty late. Why don't we call it a day? Yeah, let's get some rest. Lady. That's great. She's gonna help me take a bath now. You should come join us, too. What? Uh, I couldn't. It's okay. I don't mind at all. Um, I... Hey, Kamoana. Did you know? Dial started to grow a brand new tail. Wow, really? I want to see? He's up at the observation tower. Let's go see. Modessa, you too! Uh, all right. But don't run, or you'll trip. <sighs> Thanks, Eleanor. I appreciate it. <laughs> Having some girl trouble, my little Malik? I'm just glad Kamawana and Medissa are starting to feel better. Yeah. They both still have a long way to go, but it's such a relief to see them smiling. We've got bigger things to worry about. Hurry up and locate the next Earth Pulse point. Right. Okay. Must you always be so blunt, Velvet? I must, in fact. We're up against the Abbey here, and sooner or later they'll find this place. That's true, but still... Do we go find another hideout? No. We'll keep on the offensive. We'll capture the remaining Therians before the Abbey finds us. As a swordsman, I can respect that mindset. I'm not so sure we could hold this place anyway. And we've got no obligation to. I found another Earth Pulse point. It's in the eastern part of East Gand, I think. But that's... All right. We're headed for East Gand. Then our first stop should be Port Taliesin.
<laughs> it's sour. So you've kept your sense of taste. In my dreams I have. Nowhere else. Does that make this a dream? It would have to be, wouldn't it? After all... I devoured you. That's right. Don't you go forgetting it. How could I ever forget it? The taste of your... <gasps> How could I ever... Looks like the fog's rolling in. Yep. Eleanor, there's something I want to be sure we get perfectly clear. Um, all right. What is it? Luffy said is not your little Moloch. What? That's all you wanted to say? You realize he doesn't belong to you either, right? Indeed I do. Luffy said's his own person, and not anyone else's. Y you're right. Malakim aren't just tools to be used by exorcists as they pleased. I'll be more careful not to forget that. Good, as long as we're on the same page. <laughs> Since we're on the subject of reminders, you haven't forgotten our little bet, have you, Velvet? You mean the 100 gold on whether I'd break? No, I haven't forgotten. A word of caution. People can fight against pain, but they can't fight against happiness. If you're keen on winning our bet, I'd steer clear of ill-fitting dreams. Sorry to break it to you, but all I have anymore are nightmares. The fog's cleared. Of course we didn't. A bunch of shameless rogues who are very good at shameless roguery. Damn straight. But it's strange. These waters don't usually see much fog. Whoa! It's like a castle! This used to be the base of operations for a rich trading family. When trouble came knocking, they were ready for it, to say the least. Wow! They must have had a lot of enemies. But that was a long time ago. Nowadays, it's just another town in the middle of nowhere. But even so, to us, it was the big city of our dreams. You know this area well. I grew up near here. Keep on going, and you'll run into a ball. My home village. Then... the Therian is... Yeah, somewhere in my village. Is that okay? No one will know me there. Everyone I knew, I already devoured. Ah, oh, damn! I forgot today was the day Nico was coming. I missed out on buying that special quiche. <sighs> That's too bad. I wish she'd just open up a shop here. You'd think it would be easier than always having to make the long trek from a ball. I heard she doesn't want to leave the village because she's waiting for her missing friend to return. What are you talking about? A ball's nothing but a ruin! What? Well, you're a morbid young woman. Sure, the place was hit pretty bad by a demon a few years ago, but it's not like it's abandoned. Many of the villagers were hurt, but thanks to Lord Artorius, nearly all of them survived in the end. That can't be... It certainly is. In fact, there's a girl from there, Nico, who comes here once a week to sell things. Just yesterday, my husband sent medicine to the general store there and got some juicy pricklebore meat in return. That can't be right. Velvet? What's going on? That's what I'd like to know. Well, 
just have to go there and see for ourselves. Which way is your village? It's far to the east, through the Morgana Woods. I'll finish this one. <laughs> You're not hurt, are you? No, I'm fine. Velvet said a ball was wiped off the map, but it sounds like someone's been coming from there with things to sell. Do you think a new group of settlers moved in? Apparently that merchant Nico is someone Velvet knows. She said something about Artorias having saved the village. Do you think it had something to do with the Earth Pulse Point? I can't say. We've heard too many conflicting things. This feels wrong to me. We won't find the truth by wandering blindly in the dark. Right. It's not like we can turn back. But Miss Mogulu, what if there's darkness ahead too? Then we'll take a nice nap together. Forever, probably. Oh. I wonder what Velvet's hometown is like. A ball? I've heard about it from other sailors, although that was a long time ago. They said it's a fairly plain place, and it's home to rustic, hospitable folk. That sounds like any country village to me! I wonder if Velvet used to be rustic and hospitable. Oh, you mean to say she's devious and rude now? N not at all. <laughs> it's okay, you can admit it. It's pretty much the truth. Well, I imagine she was a plain, hard-working girl. Hmm? You really believe that? Call it a guess, really. I bet she was a cheerful, loving sister. Maybe so. Hmm. And now she's the Lord of Calamity. If she sees her former friends, maybe she'll remember some of what she's lost. But what has she lost? why Velvet was sent to that prison island in the first place? It had to be to funnel the other prisoners' malevolence to Anominot, right? There's an Earth Pulse point near a ball, right? Wouldn't it have been easier just to leave her there? Lack of food, probably. I heard she devoured the entire village. Could that rumor really be true? Who can say? Let's ask Aizen's coin. You know it doesn't work like that. All right, let's think. Why else would Artorius move Velvet to the island? If she was the first Therian he captured... <gasps> he needed a guinea pig to test out what was written in the ancient book! Precisely. He made a special cage for her in the island prison, where Earth Pulse Point and Malevolence met. Then he used Velvet to test how Therians work. Huh. I could see him doing that. But turning his own family into an experiment... I'm just offering a theory. But a man willing to sacrifice his brother's life wouldn't likely show mercy to his sister either. How could he be capable of such things? Perhaps that's just how badly he wants to save this world. Or perhaps there's no other way it could be saved. Huh? Oh, <laughs> 
Sorry to cut you down. couldn't be true. You're too strong to let some crummy demon take you down. You're alive. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Sorry, I... I didn't mean to embarrass you in front of your friends. I have to let everyone know the good news. You've finally come back to us! 
Nico's alive. She's alive. Don't let your guard down. I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, naturally, we've got a Reaper with us. Let's head for a ball. We can ask everyone there exactly what happened. Y yeah. Velvet, I have to ask. Are you sure that the other villagers died that day? Well, it's... It's not like I have time to check. Killed Luffy. Velvet, are you all right? Of course I'm all right. I know I'm right. I'm sure of it. This isn't how the village should be. Well, let's stay calm and investigate. I am calm. I'm fine. Really. It didn't seem like that was someone else masquerading as this Nico girl. But if she's the real thing, then something very unnatural is going on. You get me, Rokuro? Yeah. We better keep an eye out.